everybody. Happy Friday. Let's see, am I in the right place? I suddenly feel like I'm not in the right place. Let's see. Hmm. Yep, I am, I am. Oh, suddenly, little panic. <laughs> All right. How are you guys? It's Friday. We made it to Friday. Yay. This is my regularly scheduled time for Facebook Live. So today it feels normal. The other days it has felt very strange. <laughs> Hi guys, good to see you. I, um, let's see, I need to share this over to my page post. I had like a little panic there. I thought I was in the wrong place, but no, we're in the right place. One time I went live on my own personal page and I didn't realize it until I saw my uncle pop up. And I was like, okay, wait, he's not a stamper. Oh, you, you only make that mistake one time and then you feel like you're going to make it every time. But anyhow, today is day three of our 12 Days of Christmas Facebook Lives. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Um, I... I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I have a lot of non-fun creative work to do <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. Non-fun meaning it's a lot of cutting and sorting. Um, and all I want to do is design projects to show you guys. You have to you have to do some of the non-fun stuff in order to get to the fun stuff. But one thing I have done is all of Club Create for January is done. I sent my PDF over to my proofreader and I will show you guys on Monday. It is the rainbow um, set from the upcoming spring catalog. By the way, um, if you have ordered from me anytime in the last year, I have ordered you a catalog. It will come straight from Stampin' Up. It will come at the end of December, most likely. You'll get spring and celebration catalog. Um, strange noise coming from the dog. Um, if you need one and you don't think that I'm going to send you one, like if you haven't ordered from me, I'm not going to automatically send it. Um, of course we've had like 18 deliveries today. Today's delivery day. And there's another one. And that's why the dog's barking. Um, so anyway, if you need a catalog, email me or message me. If you're, um, one of my regular customers or you've ordered from me in the last year and your mailing address has changed, that's very important that you tell me, reach out and tell me. Um, I still do make mistakes with that, but um, if you will email me, um, I will hopefully <laughs> remember to send your catalog in the right place. All right, good. It's good to see you guys. So today is Frosted Gingerbread, this bundle right here. You know, this is probably my favorite I gave them chew toys too before we started and he's still barking. Um, we're going to pretend like it's not happening. Um, let's see, where was I? Frosted gingerbread, my favorite bundle in the holiday catalog, probably my favorite. I always reserve my favorite for my holiday retreat. So that's what we use for my holiday retreat to go this year, frosted gingerbread. And I'm assuming that many of you have it. It's really cute. There's so many um, treat packaging possibilities with this. There are gingerbread things everywhere. When I was planning my frosted gingerbread projects for my holiday retreat, um, it was like early October, late September, and there was not gingerbread anywhere to be found, which makes it hard. Oh, the other thing is that there's peppermint in here. So peppermint, it's a sending you peppermint kisses, and then there's some cute little peppermint candies. So not only can you do gingerbread treats, but you can do anything peppermint, flavored or related um, and use a stamp set. I uh, was thinking the K-Cups, the peppermint, either peppermint coffee or peppermint um, hot chocolate K-Cups would be cute. Um, don't they have gingerbread K-Cups too? Like gingerbread coffee flavor? I'm not a coffee drinker, so I'm not sure, but I think I've seen that. But anyway, tons of possibilities. Today, we're going to make a card and then we're gonna also make a 3D project with a non-candy gingerbread snack. That's all I'll tell you. Um, and then at the end, I will show you my projects from my holiday retreat, uh, most of them. I've actually given a couple of them away already. Um, but I will show you at the end. That PDF is available in my PDF store, and it has eight projects. That's a lot. Um, usually I do five or six, so it has, a lot. it has eight. Plus you'll have two more today. So 
Okay, before I flip the camera around, I just want to remind you of the last chance list. Um, oh, cute, Rhonda. She says she did candy cane lip balm. Yes, candy cane lip balm. I see that all the time. And uh, at this time of year, and that's really a good one. That's a good one. Because sometimes we have people that don't want food or sugar or sweets. Um, not me. I always want the sugar. <laughs> but in the years past when I was trying to um, maybe eat healthier or whatever, we all know those people. You want to find treats that are non-edible or non-sugar. So that's a good one, the candy cane lip balm. There's lots of um, candy cane like hand sanitizer and all that at Bath and Body Works too, which is good non-edible treats. Um, okay, so the last chance list, I just checked. Oh, and I wanted to tell you guys too, Stampin' Up! has changed their back order situation. Um, because of the global supply chain issues, Stampin' Up! has had to tweak the way that they do things. So instead of things going on back order, when Stampin' Up! runs out of the inventory, they're gonna go on non-orderable immediately. Usually they would go on back order until a certain threshold number and then they would become non-orderable because it costs a lot of money for a company to send things out when they accept orders when things are on back order. So let's say you ordered four things and they ship the three things to you, but then they have to ship that fourth thing to you later on when it comes in, it becomes very expensive for companies. So Stampin' Up! It has changed that policy. For now, I don't know, maybe they'll go back to back orders later when all of this gets straightened out. But for right now, and I, it kind of freaked me out when I looked at our inventory status. We, As demonstrators, we have a little website that we can look at to see what's on back order, low inventory, all that. And there was no um, back order, it just said unorderable, which freaked me out. One of the things that's unorderable is a stamp set we used yesterday, the Peaceful Deer. But that will come back. Once they replenish the stock, it'll be turned back on and it'll be put back in the store. You just have to keep checking. Um, so be aware of that. If you go and see something that says unorderable, um, if it's something that's carrying over or something in the annual catalog, then that just means they're waiting for more. If it's on the last chance list though, that's it. It's gone. Um, so everything, I would say 90% of the holiday catalog is last chance list. Um, so anything that you want in there, um, you need to get what I, I looked before I got on. That's how I started on this tangent. But before, before I started, I looked and there are two things in the United States that are gone And it. They're both the whimsy and wonder bundle. You know, the pink, it's the pink ribbon and that paper both gone. There's a few other things that are, um, I think in French, um, but here in the United States, the thing, I mean, unless you're a French speaker, maybe you want French things too, but for the majority of us who, you know, are buying things in the United States or getting the English version, it seemed like all of those were available. That that uh, Peaceful Deer stamp set is carrying over, so they will replenish that stock. So just take it with a grain of salt. We've all become very flexible in the last two years, haven't we? We're able to roll with the punches <laughs> and understand. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but ordering online, I find unorderable all the time. There were some things I wanted from Pampered Chef yesterday, out of stock unorderable. So it's not a Stampin' Up! problem. It's a global supply chain problem. So that's it. That's the um, last chance list. Check it out. Make sure you get those things before they're gone. If you have a question about something that's unorder unorderable, e uh, message me. And sometimes they do completely take it off the website. So if you were looking for Peaceful Deer and it doesn't come up, that means they've removed it until they get it back and then they'll put it there again sometimes but then sometimes things are there and it'll say unorderable so who knows who knows i don't know i think if it's returning it'll still be there but who knows we just have to keep checking it's like a fun shopping game <laughs> all right 12 days we will continue on monday with peaceful cabin all of you who've been asking me for peaceful cabin your wish is my command monday we will do two projects with the cabin stamp set and dies. Um, I told you guys I was very challenged by that stamp set, but I like what I came up with and I think you will too. Uh, reminder, Club Create signups um, close on Tuesday. This is December's Club Create project. If you're interested in Club Create, um, click on the tab at the top of, the, of my blog. This is Club Create, or I'll update this with a link um, when I'm done and you can just click that if you want to go, it's a subscription, but you can cancel anytime. Um, okay. How about a winner from yesterday? Now, remember during 
12 days I'm doing prizes differently, you have to actually go to my blog and click the link towards the bottom and go over and fill out a little questionnaire. Again, it's just silly questions. I think today I asked, what is your favorite Christmas cookie, Christmas dessert, and then your mailing address so that if I pick you, I can mail you your prize. Um, I'm not gonna spam you, don't worry. <laughs> I delete it after I pick a winner, okay? Um, the winner is Julie Schoonover, Schoonover. Julie Schoonover. Julie, did I say it right? I don't know. Julie, I already have your mailing address, so I will get this in the mail to you, hopefully tomorrow. Thank you for sharing. Um, I didn't pick out a prize for today. Oh, I have my prizes right here. Okay, let me pick something. I have my whole prize basket. Let's see. What do we want to give away? Um... It's always hard for me to pick. Okay, how about the, let me see, do I have matching stamp set? Yes, okay, the Knit Together Bundle. That's what I'll give away on Monday, okay? Is it Christmas card today, Carol? Or was that yesterday? I don't know, who knows? I actually typed them all up this morning so I could be confused. I don't know. Just click the link on today, go over there, fill it out. You'll be entered to win. You know what I did notice though? It only had 190 entries, but it said 340 people had started, they call it a survey. Had 340 people had started it, but only 190 people completed it. So if you went over there and started it, why didn't you complete it so you could be entered to win? Make sure you go all the way through, all right? Because <laughs> you want to win a prize. All right, knit together bundle, that's what we'll give away on Monday. All right, well, let's get started. Let me flip the camera over. You guys, I gave you your treats. Why are you staring at me? I gave them treats. And they're being nosy rosies over there. All right, let me get all of this and do this. Is today Christmas card? Really? That's today? Really? Hmm. All right, well, who knows? Who knows? I will pick a winner. You have all weekend to answer the questions. Not that they're that hard, but I don't know. Maybe you have to think on your <laughs> answer. I don't know. All right, let me get all my goodies. I've got a lot of stuff right here. Let me get it all out of the way. All right, so Frosted Gingerbread, where did I put the stamps? So how many of you have this already? I wish I could see um, sales. So I could know, like, you know, out of all of our stamp set, this is the third best-selling stamp set or whatever. I wish I could see because then I would know, you know, when I'm planning, do most people have this already? I don't know. So do you guys have it? I just really think it's probably very popular. All right, we're going to start out by making a card. And the really cool thing about this set is that you can make the cookies several different ways. So you have the stamps, right? And here's a card. Um, I actually kind of based this card today on this card. This is from my retreat um, PDF. I stamped them in white craft ink and embossed them with um, white embossing powder. But today we're gonna paper piece, which means we're not gonna stamp, we're just gonna use the dies. So that's another way. And then the, the other way to make a cookie is to just cut it right out of the paper, which is what we'll do in the on the second project. See, there's lots of different options. And I actually cut out a bunch of these for some um, tags that I did for, well, for a pillow uh, gift that I did for my retreat. But anyway, the paper's really cute. Um, I love when the dies match the paper. If you haven't looked at it, it's really good. There isn't a die for the tree, which, frustrates me. Why, why didn't they include a die for the tree? So I did fussy cut those, but everything else has a die. Well, I guess maybe the mitten does, doesn't either. Hmm. Once again, they didn't ask my opinion when they were designing these things. I don't know why they don't ask me. <laughs> All right, let's make our cookies and our peppermints. And I'm going to use adhesive sheets. Now, those of you that got my retreat box, um, or my retreat to go, you got adhesive sheets in there. Have you guys used them? They're so good. I love, I absolutely love them. And where is the paper that I need? Did I throw it away? 
Um, adhesive sheets are for those of us that are messy, right? Messy with the glue. Raise your hand if you're messy with the glue. That would be me. Um, and so the adhesive sheet, that's probably not big enough. The adhesive sheet is going to turn your paper into a sticker. So we are going to cut, actually, we're going to put the adhesive on the white. So the cinnamon cider is the color I'm using. That's going to be the bottom. And then basic white is going to be that icing layer. Um, and this, the adhesive sheets are really cool. They come in these strips, which you can, I, I don't know, I feel like it kind of helps me not waste a whole lot. I'm going to lay that down on there like that. And then I will pick up the other one and lay that down on there like that. All right. And then, you know what, let's do the red one while we're here also. Put that red one right there. Like that. All right, and then we'll just cut them out. And I don't know about you guys, but I have like a bunch of adhesive sheet pieces because I do this and then I will have all of this left and then I throw it in a, in a drawer and I piece it together when I'm not making a video. When I'm making a video, I try to make it look nice and neat. All right, so there we go. We've got the red and the white. Both are gonna be stickers. Um, now the peppermints, you have lots of choices. Let me get the icing right here. Here's the icing. The peppermints, you're going to have lots of choices. Let me make sure I'm using my right pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, lots of different size circles. So I'm going to use these loose ones and I debated, you know, do you put red on the bottom or do you put white on the bottom? And I think, let me see, did I give that card away already? I think I did. I think on my other one, I did the opposite. But today we're gonna put red on the top, all right? And we'll do white, we'll do three. How many did I do? Three different sizes. I think I did the biggest, that one, and the medium one, that one. And then the small one, is that that one right there? That feels too small, but that feels maybe too big. Nope, that's right. Okay, we'll do that. All right, the other thing we're gonna do is I've got a piece of basic white and I'm gonna give it a scalloped stitched edge. Um, these are from the pinned flowers dies and I use this die a lot to make a border and then I, you guys have seen me, I slip it under cardstock, um, but you can, it's actually not gonna disconnect the scallop from the piece so we can cut the actual piece of cardstock and give it a scallop border rather than having to cut a strip. Now, if you're doing two different colors, which is what I usually do, you're gonna have to uh, make a strip of the stitched scallop border. But today, we're gonna do it different. Okay, let me bring the guy, the big machine over. Today's projects, I feel like, are relatively easy. I know this one probably, you could consider this one a little bit fussy because there's a lot of pieces, but I think it's pretty easy. Mac, I don't know why you're staring at me. Go eat your cookie. Pepper was stealing their cookies before I even started. Little stinker. All right, all the white. I think we'll have to do that. We're gonna have to do it in sections because we can't fit that other one on there. All right. Hello everybody who is just joining or who has jumped on since I flipped the camera. It's good to see you guys. Happy Friday. It's very warm here. I don't like it. It's Christmas time and we should not be having this super warm weather. I mean, it feels like I, I wanna put shorts on today, but I know, I know you guys are probably mad. My Northern friends are like, ugh, we want it to be warm. We're never happy, are we, with where our weather, where we are? Wherever you are, my daughter always says, my middle daughter says, I'm not living in Texas when I grow up. I don't like the weather. It's too hot. And I tell her, look, wherever you live, friend, there's going to be some kind of weather you don't like. If you move up north, you're going to get tired of the cold weather. If you live on the coast, you'll get tired of hurricane season. You know, I mean, there's just always, always something. Always something. All right, I'm going to use my dye brush here. Look at that, ta-da. I love when it comes out like that. I'll do one more. All 
my middle daughter is the one that wants to do whatever is the opposite of what we want her to do. So, of course, she's like, I'm moving far away from you guys. <laughs> okay. We'll see. We'll see about that. I used to say that, too. All right, so this piece of basic white. You know what? I don't think I put the measurements for this card today on today's blog post. I need to update that because you guys are going to want the sizes of these pieces. I do know I typed in the sizes for the box we're making, but I don't think I did this one. So see what I'm talking about, how it leaves it connected like that? Isn't that adorable? Now, if you're going to cut it and slide it under another piece, obviously you would just cut it from a single strip of cardstock. All right. Let's move all of this out of the way. And we're going to adhere these to the cookies. I think cinnamon cider is the perfect color for gingerbread, but I've also used the craft paper and I've used um, crumb cake, which was what this card was. Um, soft suede might work. You could also do, you know, like vanilla and do, you know, a vanilla cookie with red icing or something like that. I just automatically go to gingerbread since it's called frosted gingerbread, but nothing says you can't do a different kind of cookie. All right, let's put that one on there. Easy peasy, no liquid glue mess. Now, these peppermints, I will tell you, they're kind of small and so, you might get a little, a little irritated with them, but they are just, whoops, that's the wrong one. Where's my other take your pick tool? Hmm, well, I'll just turn it around. I don't know, I have one that has that end on it already. I don't know why the spatula end is on, on this one. All right, get those out. And then you're gonna peel off that adhesive. like this and put that right there and it makes a little peppermint. How cute is that? What color you don't these little starlight candies don't they come in different colors like I know there's green, but I think you can buy them in different colors, right? So possibly you could make candies for the rest of the year. Oh, Kate, she says, yeah, my son said that and he moved to Japan. Yeah, I better be careful, huh? I better not encourage her. I could totally see her doing that too. I have a friend whose kids both moved far. One is in Korea and then one was doing mission work over in Asia. I'm like, oh, that's hard. That's, that's very far, especially during a pandemic. You won't be able to see them for a long time. All right, put that right there. Look at our little candies. Aren't they so cute? Adorable. Okay, now our little, little note, our little paper. We're going to stamp the... Now, there's two really good sentiments that I like on here. Um, you're the icing to my gingerbread, which is what I was going to use, but then I realized I used it on the other project, so I thought, let's use something different. And I used my second favorite, sending you peppermint kisses which is really cute. And we're gonna stamp that in real red right down here, okay? Now, let's move all of this before we put it all together. We're gonna to stamp some peppermints on our card base, okay? Again, cinnamon cider. Look at all the little confetti. We can make some confetti out of that. Um, cinnamon cider card base and I'm going to stamp the peppermint just kind of around the border to give us a little more interest. You could also do the candy cane background stamp would be really cute here. Oh, I didn't think about that. That would be cute. I love to, to stamp my card base. I think it I think it's fun. I do that a lot. All right, now here's some of that paper, that awesome paper, and I'm gonna mat it on real red. 
Okay. And then um, dimensionals. I know, Debbie, your daughter's pretty far, isn't she, from you? I know, it's hard. My oldest is away at school, but she's only three hours away, which you can do that in a day and come back if you had to. You know what? I feel like I need to stamp some more of these. They're not enough on the edge. Um, that's pretty, you know, pretty close. I know this looks weird, but we want to see some hanging off the side. I didn't do enough on the side. Let's see. Now you can see more of them. They're just kind of in the background, just kind of, you know, a little something, something in the background. All right, now let's bring over our little, that looks like a little, like a, like a note or something you tore out of a, out of a notepad. It's really cute with that scalloped border. Okay, now notice I used a different pattern of paper, right? Um, there's lots of choices, lots and lots of choices in this pack. There's some patterns, I showed you the ones where you can die cut the shapes but there's also some where um, it looks like gingerbread, you know, so you can have a gingerbread background if you wanted to. All right, we're gonna put the big peppermint up here, like that, and we'll put the two littles right here. I think my mat is bigger than this mat. It looks like it is. And I think I cut out a smaller peppermint, but that's okay. We'll make these two work like that. Let's move this guy up. I want him to be straight up and down. Hanging over, but not too far that he can't go in the envelope. Maybe this guy goes up a little bit hmm, like that. Okay, there we go. I think I do like the red. I think I like the red paper better than that paper. That paper feels busy. This is really busy paper. So like I had told you guys with, um, what is it, the painted season paper, you have to be careful when you mix patterns. If you have a busy pattern, you wanna keep it simple with your stamping. And if you have this a more monochromatic, simple pattern, then you can get a little more crazy with your stamping. But anyway, that's a fun, cute card. Um, you could change this by cutting out the cookies straight from the designer series paper, or you could stamp them whichever way you want. And you know what else? Let me show you. Where did I put the stack of paper? You can even, if those peppermints are too tedious for you, look, there's a whole sheet of peppermints that the dyes will cut out. I mean, hello, easy button, right? So if I was gonna make a bunch, if these were gonna be like my Christmas cards or something, I was gonna make a bunch of them, that's what I would do. I would use, I wonder if this one, this one will cut out three at a time. Is there a, look, oh, it does, look. Love it, there's one more. So, you know, or maybe there's two more. You could, uh, boy, you could cut out a bunch of them at one time. Pretty cool. All right. So there is project number one. Now, I teased you guys at the beginning about our second project. Let me clean up my mess. Our second project is a treat, and it's more of a healthy treat. <laughs> I say that with a question mark, healthy. It's not candy, and it's not a cookie, but it is gingerbread flavored. So hold on, hold on. And it is yummy. I will say it is very yummy. Let me get the mess all cleaned up. I can't stand when I see the video and there's all these little trash pieces hanging around. I hate it. Okay, next up. Let's see, what stamp pad do I need? Okay, I can get rid of this one and this and this and put these away. Okay, next is a little box that holds the Belvita. Is that how you say them? Belvita gingerbread breakfast. Do we call it a cookie? Breakfast snack, breakfast treat. These are delicious. I don't normally eat these, but when we buy them for whatever random reason, usually it's for this. My kids love them. And I did, look, <laughs> I did give them a try. 
they're very good very good you can find these at your grocery store during christmas time um i did link you to them on amazon just so if you want to see them um but they are easily found i think last year i even found them at our cvs or you know like our our uh, pharmacy um but these are good if you want to give a healthy snack <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's see. It's got to be healthier than, well, it's got 230 calories. But if it's a breakfast, right, then, then it's okay. <laughs> see how I justify these things? Oh, I, you know, come the new year, I'm going to have a hard time purging my sugar addiction. Every day, every year this time, I'm like, oh, no, I've slipped back into the sugar. And then I have to get off the sugar. Not fun. Okay. This is to make the box, um, cinnamon cider seven by seven and a half. So again, it's almost square. So you got to be careful that you look to see where, which one's the long side seven by seven and a half. Um, and we're going to score it at half an inch and one and three fourths. I'm looking at comments and I'm going to mess up four inches and five and a fourth. Um, who was it? Betty says a pumpkin spice is wonderful too. That sounds delicious. Mm, I like pumpkin spice. All right. Now on the short side, one and a fourth and five and, a, and three fourths, five and three fourths. Okay. All right. This is pretty standard of a box. Um, let me get all of my things that I need. Pretty standard. Um, when I was, when I was making, um, my retreat projects way back before it was a holiday season, I was able to find some gingerbread cookies, individually wrapped gingerbread cookies on Amazon. And I ordered them and they all, ca they came, they were all broken. I was like, oh, they were all like in multiple pieces. That's what I get for ordering gingerbread cookies in September from Amazon. Okay, so we're going to cut off. There's your skinny tab. We cut off those two. Okay, cut off those two skinny corners. So you guys, I've told you our saga in our neighborhood about the fiber. They're, in, they're installing, AT&T is installing fiber internet in our neighborhood. We are now going on about six months of this, and my neighborhood is not very big. We, I mean, we're, we're a relatively small neighborhood. And I've told you we've had lots of drama. There's been ruptured gas mains. There was a flood in our street, all this. Well, since the flood in our street, they haven't been back. Um, they did. The city came and repaired the street, which they didn't do a very good job of. But that's another story. Today, of course, they show up. I'm like, oh, great. And a guy gets a big, giant, big, giant saw, you know, like a circular saw. And right outside of my driveway just starts cutting the asphalt in the street. And he... And they have all this work truck and stuff all on that. We live in a cul-de-sac. And he cuts and he cuts and he cuts big all the way, like almost all the way across the street. And then he stops and they all stand around for a while. And then they pack up the truck and they leave. <laughs> and now we have this giant cut all the way through the street. And but But they didn't take anything out. They didn't put anything in. They didn't. I'm like... Oh my gosh, who is in charge of these people? They need they need a teacher in charge. <laughs> they need to get organized. It is ridiculous. Okay, I'm putting adhesive very messily right here on this skinny tab. Uh, I went out of the lines, but I can roll it back in with my finger. You guys ever do that? <laughs> okay, there, now we've got it. And we're going to fold this over. We have talked about the fiber install. Many of you have shared with me that it's happened in your neighborhood too. And I told you my friend Kay, um, they ruptured a gas line in her neighborhood in the house, caught on fire and burned down, which is not good. I'm going to trim off these corners a little, just a little bit, because I can tell they're going to stick out because it looks like I cut on the wrong side of the score line. All right, let's try that again fold down um the edge the rough edge where we or the seam i want that to be on the back side so i'm going to fold the front flap last that way we have nice rounded edges on the front on all sides of the front so yeah oh jody she says i hate when they do work and they don't notify you these people 
they don't notify you of anything, nothing. The lady across the street, they hit the main water line, our entire street filled with water. There was water all coming down into my driveway. It was under her driveway. And I mean, the, the entire sidewalk in front of her house just collapsed part of her driveway. They didn't even tell her. They just packed it up and left. I mean, who who works like that? I It just amazes me, you know, like how how do people just just I don't know blows my mind blows my mind okay now the top we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna leave this open right um that way your recipient can open it take it out and di proudly display your box on their shelf because you know that they're going to um that way they don't have to tear it apart to get into it or they can reuse it which is what we'd really like right all right now I've got this gorgeous ribbon this three-eighths of an inch organdy, glittered organdy ribbon. It is carrying over. It is not on the last chance list. Hallelujah, I'm using it quite a bit. And I like it a lot. Okay, so that's how we're gonna keep it closed. We're just gonna tie that like that. All right, there we go. Now. I have cut a piece of designer series paper. Again, I've cut a different print from what I used over here. They all will work. You could even do the gingerbread print if you wanted to, because we're keeping things really simple. Now I've got a um, vellum circle. Let's see what size is this vellum circle? Two inches, two and a fourth, two and a half. Oh, it looks small. It's two and a half. Oh no, my ruler's gonna fall behind my table. And I'm gonna put it on my box with dimensionals. They're gonna be hidden behind what we're gonna do in just a second, okay? So we're gonna put that there. Now, we're gonna cut out one of these cookies. It could be um, whatever you want, but I'm gonna use this die to cut out that snowflake. And I'm bring this cut and emboss machine back out. I should have pulled out my Little little mini cut and emboss machine. That would be perfect for this, but I didn't do that. Okay, line this up right here. And cut that out. There we go. Now, we're going to cut this cookie in half, actually, because... On the strip of paper where we're gonna stamp our sentiment, it's just a little bit too big. See, you can't really see much of the cookie. So we're gonna cut the cookie in half and make it come up and down a little bit more so that we can see it better. All right, this is just a strip of basic white cardstock. We're gonna stamp, you're the icing to my gingerbread. So cute. And I forgot my punch, so let me grab that. I forget something every single day. That just goes to show you, it's good that I do those clean recordings ahead of time each week. I'm using my Taylor Tag Punch. We have several options for making banners, but I like this one because I, I feel like I have a little bit more control. I can see exactly what I'm doing, including smearing my ink with my fingers, oh my gosh, okay. We're gonna stamp it again on the back. Obviously it was not dry. Let's try it again. That's why cardstock has two sides. One is for practice <laughs> and the other side is for the real deal. All right, get your cookie, cut it in half. And I wanted to do it symmetrically, so I'm gonna have like the point up like that. Bring this back over, and I'm not gonna smear the ink this time. There we go. Put that right there. And then, I don't know what it is about the real red, but I get it on me. It's real red, and like I said yesterday, Blackberry Bliss, there's a couple of inks that I just get on me all over the place. Now I put a dimensional there, and I'm gonna tuck this back like that, and like that. So you can still tell it's a cookie. Uh oh wait, we gotta make it even. So 
not going to look like a cookie if it's not even. Like, no, one more try. Like that. I put my dimensional over a little bit too far. That's the problem. There we go. All right. And there you have it. Easy. That is an easy treat. If you want to make a bunch for like the teachers or your coworkers, you can say, hey, I'm, I'm bringing breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> and then give them all these breakfast bars. Hey, I mean, it's a complete meal, right? Maybe? I don't know. Anyways, cute, right? Really easy. Okay, now I told you guys, don't leave yet. I told you I was going to show you a little bit of what was in my um, retreat box. So I showed you this card. And then this card is really fun. I used um, bl black on the tag and I, we inked the edges so it looked kind of like a chalkboard. This die right here is really cool too. I think we're using this die next week on another project, but this is um, in the gingerbread die, the little, little border. Don't you wish you could do the frosting like that? I know I can't. Super duper simple. Look at this one. Very simple. Um, I did that cookie like we did today. Here's another one. This one uses, oh, don't fall, don't fall. Okay. This one uses the the um, embellishments. Look, aren't they so cute? They are the gingerbread and peppermint acrylic shapes. Um, also, there is the memory and more uh, packet that comes See, it coordinates, and it. I get a lot of questions about this. Where, where do I get the um, drying rack? Look, see on my little recipe book, it's from the memories and more um, pack. I use the peppermint circles to make a little the little stove. I got that idea from my downline Deborah. Um, she had done something like that. It was so cute. Um, and then these are just stickers. That's really the easy button. And this is a, a recipe book. The the um, Tutorial for this is in my Frosted Gingerbread Retreat um, PDF that is available in my PDF store. There are eight projects, um, two of which I don't have anymore. I gave them away already. Um, but wait, I've got a couple more things to show you. This one is the Altoid, little mini Altoid. Look, I made a jar of peppermints. How cute. And then this one is not my design. This is what um, my friend Rhonda designed. It's one of our three by three boxes, which mine seems to be falling apart. And we used the little peppermints to make buttons on a gingerbread man. We put the peppermints in there and it says, I heard you've been naughty. So here's the scoop. All you get is gingerbread man poop. <laughs> so that's my friend Rhonda's design. We did that for our team meetings um, last month. Really cute. Really, really cute. Okay, so that is it for today. Um, remember, if you want make and takes for free, I believe it'll be this one and this one and this one. Those will be the three that you get for free. If you haven't checked out day two and day one, make sure you go back and check. But you'll get three free make and takes if you put your order in by Monday at midnight using this host code. You can order anything you want. It doesn't have to be necessarily what I've showed. You can order from the clearance rack. Have you guys checked the clearance rack? There's some good stuff there. You can shop from the last chance list, whatever. As long as it's a minimum $35 and it uses that host code, I will send you the make and takes for free next week. Um, okay, so then next week, let's see, what is our schedule? Tuesday is, no, Monday is Peaceful Cabin. Tuesday is Sweets and Treats. Wednesday is Be Jolly. And Thursday is Great Tidings. Um, those dies are 50% off, by the way, those Great Tidings dies. There'll be no Facebook Live next Friday. My mom and I scheduled, rescheduled our trip that we were supposed to take yesterday for Friday, okay? So there'll be no Live on the 10th. And then um, the following week, we'll do Merry Snowflakes, Sweet Little Stockings, Arctic bears maybe those dies are on low inventory so i don't know if we sell out i can't do it Marius moments and delivering cheer i believe those are tentative because i haven't i haven't designed them yet okay guys i hope you have a great weekend i will see you monday same time same place two o'clock have a wonderful weekend you guys thanks for joining me bye